Hello everybody, this is Kai Wenner from Confluent. Today I want to talk with you about MQTT and Apache Kafka. As you see here, I will do a talk about that at Kafka Summit in San Francisco in October 2018. And this is in the end the live demo which I want to show you. I will go to my GitHub projects and show you different examples of integrating MQTT with Kafka. To be more specific, I will show you Kafka Connect with the MQTT connector and I will show you Confluence MQTT proxy for that. Here you see the link um, to the full session. After the session was done, it is also being recorded and will be shown here. It is for free and you can watch the whole talk, which explains the concepts in more detail and shows the full talk. Here it's really just about the live demo. For that, I have two GitHub projects which show an integration between MQTT and Kafka. Let's first start with the Kafka Connect and MQTT connector for that. You can also try it out by yourself. It has a step-by-step -step guide and runs out of the box. Here you see the architecture. So we will generate some data from sensors or devices and then we use an MQTT broker. In this example I use Mosquito, but it doesn't matter because MQTT is an open standard. And we use Kafka Connect with the MQTT connector to integrate with that. And then the message is sent to the Kafka broker from where, where it can be consumed from any Kafka consumer. That's the basic architecture. And so um, what we will do, we will configure a Kafka connector for MQTT, as you will see here. Um, you can either do it in standalone mode with the file configuration, or you can do it in distributed mode with um, HTTP call, which is the normal scenario for serious development and production. And that's also what I will demo here. As I said, you can also do this by yourself. I will directly go to the step-by-step -step guide in this project and really more or less do what all is explained here. First of all, um, I have done, of course, all the installations of already so that we don't have to do them in the demo and some basic configurations. So um, in the beginning, we have to start our MQTT broker which I will do here. I installed it on my Mac via Brew. Um, you might have a Linux or other system where you start it differently. In addition to that, what we also have to start is Kafka. So I use the Confluent command line interface for that. If you take a look, um, right now everything is down and let's first start um, Kafka. So this starts a local instance, including its dependency Zookeeper, which is required for doing all that. that Confluent Clee is a great example for using Kafka for development locally. So after Kafka started, we also need to start Kafka Connect um, as we want to use it here. So let's also start this component. You could also do just type Kafka as Confluent Start Connect in the beginning and it would also start Kafka and Zookeeper with that. So this takes a few seconds here, um, but what I can show you here is as next step, we will then configure the MQTT connector. In this case, I use the curl command for HTTP. And you see here, it's pretty simple. I use the MQTT source connector, which I downloaded from Confluent Hub website before. And I have um, very common configurations. I show how to map from MQTT topic to Kafka topic. And that's more or less it. I don't use any advanced features like single message transforms for doing routing or filtering, which you could also configure in this setup here. So um, connect is started. So let's now configure the connector with the curl command. Here you see um, this looks good, but we can do a check on that. Here you can either again use um, the um, HTTP interface, or in this case, we can also check this with the command line interface of Confluent which is also open source, by the way. So let's check here. Okay, um, our connector is running. That's the only one which is running in this connect instance. And we can do a more specific check. And here you see this connector is running right now without exceptions. If you have problems here, it would probably already show an exception here. If you, for example, have some misconfiguration in the JSON file here. So we have set up the Kafka Connect connector. As next step, we want to create a Kafka topic. Here I have to note, um, we have a small bug in our system right now where the mapping is not working well. So right now, um, while I'm doing this in October 2018, um, it automatically maps to the MQTT dot. 
topic. So this will change in a fix pretty soon, um, but until then, um, if this um, mapping to temperature doesn't work, we always have to use MQTT dot. So that's why it's also noted in the GitHub project here. Now we have to create a Kafka topic and remember that's in the end um, where we want to send our data to. So here is the setup again. We will send data from MQTT devices to the broker and these are then pulled by Kafka Connect to the Kafka broker. That's why we had to create this topic. And now um, we have already started Mosquito as our MQTT server. So um, we can now um, wait for um, some consumers. I will do in parallel here the MQTT consumer subscriber, um, which is listening in parallel. And we will use the Kafka console consumer so that we will see it is really an end-to-end -end pipeline and the data is sent to the Kafka consumer from MQTT devices. This is now waiting for new data. And I here again did the wrong thing because we have to use the topic MQTT dot without the temperature. And so it can consume without any exceptional problem. And now we can send data. So here I just use um, the mosquito command line here and as you will see the data is sent both of course to the mosquito subscribers and it is also arriving at the Kafka consumers so we see here that this architecture really works well we send MQTT data to the broker and from here it's consumed via Kafka connect and then pushed to the Kafka consumer that's a pretty simple example here. In the real world, of course, um, the clients would be real applications which send data from MQTT and also on the other side, which consume the data from Kafka perspective. And of course, it's possible in both directions. So you could also send data to Kafka and then consume it from MQTT devices with Kafka Connect things instead of sources, which we use here. So that's more or less the first part of the example. And now um, we also, of course, can use a sensor generator. I will show that in the second example so that you see more data sets flowing. In this case, what's very important now, I will have to stop the Mosquito broker because for our second example, we will not need the broker anymore because we use the Confluent MQTT proxy for that. So the first thing what we will do is we will stop Mosquito. And after that, we will also stop Kafka Connect because we also don't need that anymore. Remember right now we have Kafka Connect running here and that is what we will stop now. Confluent stop connect. That's important because now I want to demo to you the Confluent proxy, the MQTT proxy. We do Confluent status again. You see here Kafka Connect is not running anymore and Mosquito, the MQTT broker is also not running anymore. And what I will show you now is the different option to integrate MQTT and Kafka. So what Confluent has built is an MQTT proxy, which you can use here. The huge difference to Kafka Connect is that you can also integrate with MQTT devices or gateways without the need of an MQTT broker in the middle. So that's a huge benefit in, in terms of operations, complexity, maintenance, and cost because you simply can integrate your IoT devices with Kafka directly with the MQTT proxy. The concept is very similar to the REST proxy of Confluent. So um, it is not pull based but push based and it really forwards the data directly to Kafka. And therefore for these kind of push concepts like MQTT this makes more sense and makes it much easier. So in this case it's not a trivial example like before with Kafka Connect but a little bit more advanced one. So in this case, we use Confluence KSQL streaming SQL engine to filter and process the data. But the main idea is the same here. The focus is on showing you how to send data from MQTT devices directly to Kafka and process it there. In this case, with an MQTT proxy. Again, no Kafka Connect and no MQTT broker needed. That's the main goal here and that's shown in this architecture again. That's the huge advantage of the Confluent MQTT proxy. In this case, as I said, I use KSQL, but in the end, whatever consumer you want to use is up to you. 
I have again here another GitHub project with a step-by-step -step live demo which runs out of the box. I've already built the package by myself and installed the ksql function I use in this demo. The important part here now is um, we need to start the ksql server because I'm using that. So um, this is starting. Again, no Kafka Connect running, just Zookeeper, Kafka and now also the ksql server. After that is started, we will create another Kafka topic. This is where we want to send the data to from MQTT to process it. So um, let's check again what is running locally. You see here um, KSQL server is running. It also started the schema registry because you can leverage it in KSQL, but it's not mandatory. And now let's create, um, sorry, let's create um, the Kafka topic. Temperature in this case. And after this is created, um, we have to configure the MQTT proxy, how it should map the MQTT topics to Kafka topics. In this case, um, it's also then done pretty simple. We map everything from temperature in the name to the Kafka topic temperature. So here you can also use regular expressions and do conf uh, very powerful mappings. And that's important because typically in MQTT, you have many more topics than in Kafka. So after this is done, we have to start our MQTT proxy, right? So this is um, done as part of Confluent um, platform where it's included. And we see here we have our um, configuration file here. Kafka MQTT quick start properties. Here you see my configuration. And so let's start. Um, Kafka broker at an MQT proxy. This is running. This is just another Java process, or it could be more if you want to scale it. It's the same story like the REST proxy for high scalability and so on. And this is now waiting for messages from MQTT to forward it to Kafka. So in this case, first we will start KSQL also because we want to directly consume the data from KSQL and process it. With KSQL, you see, for example, we do list topics that we now will use the temperature topic here, right? And um, KSQL is so easy to use, um, even without coding. That's a huge difference to things like Kafka streams, where you have to use um, Java code for coding. And in this case, we will use the anomaly function, which is a UDF, which I've built as part of this project. We apply an analytic model on the sensor data. And the good thing, this is really a real world example, because we get sensor data in, and then we directly apply an analytic model, in this case, to do anomaly detection. So let's do that. We create a stream. That's in the end if you don't know KSQL. Um, this is creating um, st continuous stream processing based on this topic here, which we just created. So all the sensor information which gets into from MQTT is processed by um, car sensor stream. And here then we can type our SQL queries for example, we can do a continuous query to select every new event from MQTT and do the anomaly detection based on that. This is not just interactive, this is continuous, and this can also be deployed to a KSQL server for high scalability and high throughput for mission critical systems. So here now, let's send one message first to give you a little bit of feeling about what that looks like. So here is we send a real sensor message. We use in this case Kafka cut. That's another great tool for sending data to Kafka or for testing. And the real world, this would be any other client or the normal Kafka console producer. And you see, we send it to the temperature topic. And from here, the MQTT proxy is listening. So remember, we are um, sending this. Um, so this is going directly to Kafka. Um, so you see here how that works. But now what's more important than sending data directly to Kafka is that we send MQTT data. And that's what I'm doing next. So this part is really sending you to Kafka without any kind of MQTT stuff. But here now what I'm doing, I send the same sensor information. Um, sorry, this was the wrong copy paste. So here we see that we are using Mosquito Pub. So this is part of the, an MQTT implementation, but this is just a publisher command, right? No MQTT broker is running in the middle. We are just using um, the client which sends MQTT data 
And this is now consumed by the MQTT proxy here in the middle and forwards the data and pushes it directly to my Kafka topic, where it's in this case consumed by the KSQL client. So here you see how that works. We got the second message. Let's do it one more time. All of that works in real time and even including some powerful stuff like in this case applying an analytic model. So this is a great example for sense analytics in a real world use case. Um, herefore, I also want to show you the generator, which generates different sample data. For that, um, we just started and it every second or so it creates a new message. And this is also forwarded via the MQTT proxy to the KSQL client in this case and generates different sensor data. Then my KSQL UDF applies the analytic model under the hood and gives an output. And if you go back to the use case, here you see then in the real world it would look like this, which generate sensor, for example from cars. Without the need for an MQT broker, we can forward it and push it towards Kafka. And from here, either for example use KSQL in my case to do analytic model and predictions or filtering or whatever you want to do. And then we can send it to the next system. In this case, regarding anomalies, it could be an elastic search where we send all the data for analysis. And if, the, um, if a specific threshold is reached, for example, let's say if it's bigger than four, then probably it's some kind of anomaly. Then we could also send it to a real-time alerting system in parallel. Right? So it's a, two great examples. Let's recap. First of all, you can integrate um, Kafka via Kafka Connect. This pulls the data from the MQT broker with all the advantages of Kafka Connect like high scalability and single message transforms and all the other features you have in Kafka Connect. And on the other side, you could also use the MQTT proxy. The huge difference here is you don't need an MQTT broker in the middle. So um, that's much less efforts and cost and maintenance and so on. Both approaches have their trade-offs, so choose the one you need. But this is great examples how you integrate Kafka with MQTT for IoT scenarios. Thanks for watching and please also then take a look at my complete talk from Kafka Summit. I will upload all the slides and the talk will be here including the full recording. Thank you for watching.